Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Break It Down. Let's set out for the stars. Specifically to Dargonus. We have Abelard's quest to do there, and I want to see what's going on with Achilles. And do we have any new colony projects? We do. I figured we would since we have all these empty slots on each planet. A few good options. But right now we need three profit factors, so false wonders is my priority. By showing illusions to the masses, it is possible to gain a lot of attention and attract pilgrims. We get plus three profit factor and times six people. Now one of the projects has been completed in Drusus's footsteps crusade shrine. Works for me. I still think I'm going to prioritize Profit Factor right now. So let's do Xenos Intoxicant. A curious intoxicating substance has been discovered in Xenos Ruins. Penicine Magos Alchemist Workshops will refine and distill the substance, transforming it into pure euphoria that will delight the weary souls of aristocrats who long for new diversions. We get plus three Profit Factor times nine chemicals. Requirements. Uh, one of the projects have been completed. Forest Fortresses, Mechanized Servants, or Xeno Defense. And it requires four Xenotech. All right, and again, I'm going to prioritize Profit Factor, so new life. Retrofitted mining equipment may be of interest to the Pirates of the Expanse, enough to make a deal with them. We'll get plus three Profit Factor, requirements. One of the projects has been completed, Inferno, Armored Rage, or Unwelcome Guests. It requires two mechanisms. Alright, uh, plus five profit factor. Definitely going to do that. Praising the Muses. The patronage of architects and other artists will allow the creation of amazing and monumental works marked with the rogue trader's likeness. We get plus five profit factor. Requirements, one of the projects has been completed, Profits for Water, Adeptus Arbides, The Seasons of War. Uh, requires six Plasteel and three Adamantine as well. Minus three Profit Factor. Oh, let's do Pure Blood. The rogue trader may grant the convicts the right to buy, with their labor, the freedom of their children born in captivity. We get plus five profit factor and plus five efficiency. Requirements, one of the projects has been completed, test of wills, blood sports, or killing fields. Alright, let's set out. All the way over there. The fastest path. I think this way. My Lord Captain, 
There is an an emergency at the officer's deck. Victus's voice is quaking slightly. Numerous victims, loss of communication. Voicemen report warp voices filling the compartments. But this is not a warp breach. This is the Xenos you took aboard at Yanis. He has gone mad and went on a rampage. I have two fairly reliable witness accounts. According to one, Xeno suddenly assaulted the crew members, gutting them seemingly at random. The other claims that there are survivors who barricaded themselves in the adjacent compartments. The enforcers managed to isolate the raving Xenos in a dead end, but they have been unable, unable to pacify him so far. What will your orders be? Such are the consequences of ill-considered actions born out of the lack of faith in the God Emperor's laws. I am ready to stop the accursed Xenos' rampage personally, repay every life he has taken. Why am I not surprised? Heinrich's voice is oozing with poison. Rogue Trader, we cannot bring back your subjects, but I will gladly aid you in disposing of the rabid creature before it mauls even more people. <laughs> I am going to the officer's deck immediately. The squad of enforcers who had blocked the Xenos in the dead end corridor is waiting at the deck. I beg you to be careful, Lord Captain. May the God Emperor watch over you. Well, it may be time to put down our once ally. We'll receive the same fate that Earlier got. Instead of handing him over to the Inquisition. The body is covered in hundreds of cuts, none of which look deep enough to have ended the victim's suffering in a single blow. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Somebody open the door. Open the door before he gets me. The Bane Bloody body looks like a broken marionette lying in an unnatural position. Let's see how that compares to Pascal's current plasma gun. The corpse is missing its eyes, and its face is horribly mutilated. I always have a backup plan. Lord Captain, God Emperor be with you, and with all of us too. The Enforcer can barely suppress the tremors running throughout his body. Only you can deal with this this spawn. Permission to report, your lordship. It started a few watches after the translation. Well, actually, they say this associate of yours has been had been acting strangely even before that. It's as if he started hearing things. He was swiveling back and forth, barking something in his Zeno's tongue. Then he grabbed his blade and sliced his hand open, his own hand. Then he suddenly howled and lunged at the people nearby. A point at the demonette. Can you see her? The officer looks behind him, glances around the deck, and turns to you with an alarmed expression. See who, your lordship. Who are you referring to, Lord Captain? I cannot see anyone, Donald. I can certainly sense a warp presence nearby. You're saying you can perceive it. The entity itself has decided to reveal its form to you. The real question is, why? Where is Marijai now? Who? Oh, the Xenos. He's holed up in there. He nods at the barricaded gate. He crowded a number of crewmen in there like Groxes to a slaughterhouse. All, all we could hear were screams. But we couldn't save them, so we locked him in there so he couldn't crawl back out. Unless he finds a crack to squeeze through. The prospect of having a rabid Xenos crawling inside our bulkheads makes my heart sink. No, we ought to drag him out. Then we either put him on a chain or... Forgive my bluntness, Lord Captain. We swat him down and forget that he ever existed. Who are the victims of this massacre? 
Anyone who could get his hands on your lordship. Officers, serfs, a technomat, even attacked a servitor. Although that didn't last long. He just tore its head off. The rest of them, though. The Xeno scum tortured the life out of them. You can see the color draining from the officer's face. I've heard enough. I'm heading inside. Well, I'll block it right quick, your lordship. If only there was a way to flush that fiend out without going in. He stops and pales even more. Throne's mercy. I completely forgot. The late Technomat. He... Well, he turned on some security systems right before he bled out. We figured, if the Xenos thinks about showing his face, those systems will get him. The point is, we should go with your lordship, with your permission. It just wouldn't be right for the Lord Captain to go in there alone. God Emperor help us all. The officer tries his best to speak calmly, but his voice is quivering. The thought of going inside the compartment that has become a death trap fills him with the dread bordering on panic. Who is this? Is it the ruler of this vessel, the master of the lost child? Come closer. Let me get a good look at you. Let us not dawdle. I can hear the beating of his heart, the roaring blood in his veins, the pulsating fear in his black soul. Third brass for my sharp senses. Master Surgeon Gloves. The wearer gains plus 25 medikai. Each time the wearer uses a medikit, it provides an additional intelligence bonus plus agility bonus to temporary wounds. When the time comes for me to step into this world, you will be waiting for me. Nothing escapes my sight. Pay attention. Cast your eye there. Oops, a daisy. Nothing escapes my sight. I better myself through my service. Son of a gun. Never doubt me. The Emperor favors me today. Always keep your eye on the prize. Duty prevails. I've come because the Prince wills it. The souls of all his progenitors belong to him alone. None will escape his embrace. I always keep my options open. Arc Strategist Visor. Where it gains an additional stratagem ability, all allies in the target combat area instantly reload their weapons after each attack made by them to the start of the wearer's next turn. Marizai jerks his head up when you appear. His already gaunt face is tightly wrapped in pale gray, parchment-like skin. His teeth are bared feverishly, and his dark eyes have turned into two pitch-black mirrors that could show your reflection clearly if you were to gaze into them. He opens his mouth, but instead of words, an unnatural rasping hiss comes out. This creature ever possessed intelligence. There's no sign of it left. At last. The resonant voice that has followed you on your journey through the deck sounds like it is coming from every direction, chilling you to the bone. At last we meet, my poor child. Look at him, mortal. Look at how he yearns to return to the one whose caress his kind rejects so stubbornly. Come, child. Follow my voice. My prince will grant you all the bliss and torment in this universe. This ends now. Hanex draws his weapon. The air around him grows colder. We're putting the rabid beast down for good. Your spawn laughs musically. Sooner or later, all of his kind will step into my embrace. 
The prince is patient. The prince knows that every Eldari soul is already his. The demonite's voice suddenly forces itself inside your mind. But if you let me get close to the lost child, if you lull him into letting his guard down, my prince will reward you, Donald. The soul of this pathetic Xenos is a small price to pay for the blessings that come with my master's favor. Attack Marijai. I will not show leniency to the one who butchered my people. Grovel before the true power of humanity. Ramesh has blessed me with new victims. Am I getting paid for this? You've got a problem? I've got a price. I can do that with the right incentive. Don't get too cocky. commands I well, there's a way to hit both of these demonettes with the same attack but maybe not we could do this I'll far take a little damage but that's okay. This is why I was chosen. Faith without deeds is worthless. I know he's gonna burn to death, but I get some more versatility. I'll do it. Each strike is a prayer. Well, that was a fantastic first turn. And then what we can do. I can do that with the right and never cross a Kazbalikan. I am unsatisfied. Alas, no. For the throne. your enemies I can't take him out yet why not I mean, of course he has all the stuff that we gave him so that's all right don't get too cocky Oh, 
once again, it's a ton of stuff. Where is, uh... Not in mind. This creature is under the demonette's control. Its effect can be removed with medikits, get back in the fight ability, or the death of the demonette. The enemies of the Emperor will be undone! Better idea. I don't want to take Heinrichs out. Or do that much damage to him. With you, my emperor. This is why I was chosen. I'll do it. All right, well, Argenta did most of the work there, which makes sense. Well, yeah, I think she's a little better equipped to fight uh, demons than Heinrichs is. Amerzai staggers to his feet, bleeding from his many wounds. There's awareness in his eyes and fear. They're dead, gone, vanished, but I can still hear their whispers. How do Mankai bear them for days and days on end? I hear a genuine confusion in his voice. Hanrix is looking at you intently. You realize that the cult sensation still remains. The interrogator is ready to strike, waiting for you to say the word. Your presence is causing me a great deal of grief, Xenos. Merzai's voice turns into furious hissing. You can't step beyond the veil with nothing but your crude technologies and prayers to a deaf god. You expect those such as I to rely on such paltry protection from the terrors of she who thirsts. One of the enforcers lets his emotions get the better of him. For own sakes, Lord Captain, why are you even listening to him? That there Xenos is worse than a wild beast. How can a ship that sails in the god emperor's light allow one of his enemies to act like he's master here? Marizai looks at the man hungrily. The living meat that serves you talks too much. They would, however, make for perfect playthings. He looks straight at you. I need strength in order to suffer through your oafish voyages beyond the veil. If I don't obtain a source of such sustenance, Silent Thresh will only keep testing my limits. Lord Captain, the officer has a point. Abelard glowers at Marijai. If things continue on like this, we might end up with a mutiny on our hands. A massacre during every warp jump. As if we didn't have enough troubles to deal with on days like this. He shakes his head. I killed Marijai. Sorry, I killed Elliot. I'm gonna kill Marijai here. I could let Heinrichs do it, but... I feel like that responsibility should fall to me as the leader. I didn't kill Adira, though. Argenta did that, but I didn't have the option to do it myself. I had enough of this heresy on my ship. Marijai does not react in time. Warp Madness must have affected him more than he is letting on. He lets out a short rasp and falls to the floor. His death throes only last a moment, then the Xenos is no more. So I hadn't given him any of this stuff. I don't equipped him with everything, but they gave him a bunch of new equipment. So we get a bunch of new stuff for killing him. That's awesome.
I'll take a look at it. We already have the Righteous Fury Cape equipped, right? That's not terrible. Knuckle Guard. The Knuckle Guard grants the wearer a plus 5 bonus to weapon skill. It also grants any equipped melee weapons plus 5% armor penetration and plus 2 damage. I didn't read the other description. I Graves of the Black Archon. Every time the wearer scores a critical hit with a melee weapon, they restore agility bonus divided by 2 wounds and gain plus 2 MP. Plus 15% critical damage. I think the critical damage itself is worth it. Doesn't have a cheap charge anymore, but. That's pretty good. And this isn't terrible. I'm gonna swap this out with this. Because it only works against human enemies, so. It's not that good. We'll keep these though. This does more damage. Costs 2 AP. I like the melting effect on the Desolation Blast Pistol, so that's what I'll use. She's playing a support role, she's not a DPS. Keep your wits about you. So we've had to kill three companions so far in this playthrough. We're missing out on <laughs> quite a few quests. I think this is the only playthrough where I'd kill companions unless they attacked me first. That will see me killing any Xenos or Adira on Iconoclast or Heretical playthrough. Well, let's level up real quick. Oh! AP increase. Grants plus one additional AP at the 10th rank. Nice quick level up. I always have a backup plan. Alright, hopefully we can finish our initial jump. And we'll do our next series of projects. Uh, let's do Lightbringers here, for the mostly for the Imperial Navy reputation. Security is also nice. Uh, so Lightbringers, the traitor's warp currents can be made safer by sending pious patrols to help those in distress about the lighting of warp beacons. We get 5,000 Imperial Navy reputation and plus two security for all colonies. Requires, I'll have to keep reading this top one. It's the same across all of these projects. 
but it costs 4 Prometheum and 6 Plasto. Then Yanis. Really security, but I mean, reputation is always good. So let's do Secret Lair. A Xeno Specialist will decipher the written records left by the ancient Xenos that once inhabited Yanis. You get 5,000 Caspalic Reputation, minus 3 Security, plus 3 Efficiency, and it costs 2 Xenotech. And all we can do here is Sacred Flame. So passing through Desolation Plants and a multitude of filters, raw materials with high energy potential will be transformed into Combustible Prometheum. We get 9 weapons at the cost of 3 Prometheum and 3 Chemicals. Alright, Dargonus, let's do Holy Prophet. The due date of the tithe approaches, and by using corrupted schematics, it is possible to keep both the psychers and the gold. Not very dogmatic of us. But we get plus four profit factor and six people. And Vibos. A tough one to justify. Yes, do Navy Whips. The disciplinary officers of the Imperial Navy will make for wonderful wardens on Vibo 6. We get Craven's Bane. The terrifying weapon of Erge Sukhoi, a ship disciplinary officer who single handedly put down a mutiny staged by the cowardly officers of the Void Triumvir. Chain weapon. Oh, two handed chain weapon, too. Oh, we get 6,000 Imperial Navy reputation. Plus two complacency, plus two efficiency, and plus two security. The only requirement is reputation with the Imperial Navy. Oh, why did I lose 11 profit factor? Is there a short on people? I mean, we still have 121. I'm not too worried about it, but what the heck? I guess I have to do that one project that costs profit factor, because that'll give us 18 people. I'm not sure how we have a shortage. We never had a shortage before, and we used to have zero people. Oh boy. Alright, six flashbangs. Six advanced medikits. Laurels of Command. The wearer gains the move, move, move ability that costs zero AP. The wearer and targets of move, move, move are immune to the slowed effect until the end of the round. Not that great. Also, pretty sure all my officers, well, Cassia, I don't think has move, move, move. A military combi tool. Whenever the wearer uses a non attacking consumable item, it counts as an attack of a different type than the previous attack for the purposes of versatility. Also, this combi tool grants a 50% chance that a consumable item will not be spent when used. That's actually not bad. It's a free stack of versatility. An overcharged plasma gun. That's definitely an upgrade for Pascal. Does it do anything special? Oh, this plasma gun can only perform an overcharged attack Sorry, overcharge attack actions. Its damage is increased by five times your ballistic skill bonus percentage. Uh, this pla sorry, this plasma gun's plasma explosion deals two times more damage and is fifteen percent more likely to happen. Yeah, that's definitely an upgrade. Psy focus. The wearer deals an additional or deals additional warp damage with their melee attacks. Whenever the wearer suffers a critical hit, their dodge and armor is reduced by minus thirty percent. To the end of combat. That might be an upgrade for Heinrichs. Auto stimulant. The wearer gains immunity to effects depending on the number of unyielding beacon stacks. Six or more stacks, immunity to bleeding. Nine or more stacks, immunity to toxin. Twelve or more stacks, immunity to burning. 
where it gains all previous immunities. Uh, two battle stimulator medikits. I think we've seen this before. So it restores wounds, removes bleeding, burning, and toxin, heals one fresh injury, or if none, one old injury upon a successful medikai test. Contains battle stimulators that grant plus 20 strength for three rounds. No downside. If the character has a combat medikai or field medic talents, the amount of restored wounds will be increased by the bonuses provided by these talents. Notes on weaknesses. Whoever gains a permanent bonus to direct damage, this bonus is doubled if the wearer's attack triggers an opening. Scout Armor. The wearer's cover efficiency is increased by 15%. This bonus doubles if the wearer has not moved during their turn. Base Armor Property, plus 15% armor if wearer is in full cover. I'm going to call that Junk. Alright, uh, Forces World Origin, Tempestus Carabus. Base Armor Property, plus 2 Deflection against Range Attacks. World Property, plus 10 Toughness. That, I believe, will go on Abelard. 3 Advanced Medikits. Omnisaya Holy Symbol. Where it gains, plus 20 Tech Use, and plus 20 Logic. They can also reroll failed Tech Use or Logic Tests once per test. 3 Toxin Grenades. Amar's Pattern Power Axe. I believe we'll be giving that to Olfar. Improved lightweight boots. The wear of these boots gains percent parry and rerolls failed dodge tests. What is the parry scale with? I didn't look. Strength. Volition inhibitor. When the wearer uses controlled shot, any enemies adjacent to the wearer's allies suffer a minus 30% penalty to dodge against the wearer's next attack. I don't think we need that. Real quick, we're going to keep that. I don't remember which boots Abelard has equipped. Or what... Haskell has. A right, Vortex Pendant. The wearer gains plus 5 willpower each time their abilities affect an ally. This effect remains until the end of combat and it stacks. Heavy Xenomesh, base armor property, plus 2 deflection against non-human enemies. Got to grab that. And Missouri Pattern Sniper Rifle. Do anything special? No. That might be good on Cassia. Alright, went up. Were we at 5 before? Either way, a new engine, the Saturnine Pattern Class 5 engine. This plasma drive provides 13 speed along with strong acceleration and braking, so we lose 1 speed with for upgraded acceleration and braking. I think that's an upgrade. Galleon Adamantine Voidship Plating. Galleon Adamantine Plating protects the vessel from harm, negating 12 points of damage on the port and starboard, and 5 points of damage on the fore and aft. That is a direct upgrade. An avoid Sunder Lance Battery. Medium range Lance Weapon dealing from 91 to 105 damage to a chosen enemy within a wide firing arc. Yeah, that is also a direct upgrade. Fantastic. Now let's hand out some equipment real quick. Are you telling me he doesn't have...
Must not have features. Adeptus Astartes equipment. Okay, so yeah, I, I see now. In my case, we'll take it. I was misreading it, thinking it needed Adeptus Astartes equipment, but it can't have it. Uh, where's Pascal at? Yeah, that is much better. Honestly, you could probably do it with an upgrade. Plus five toughness isn't that great. Okay. Uh, I haven't tried the Bruiser Boots yet. That works with defensive stance like I'm hoping it does. And I'd say it's better. Alright, I'll consider that an upgrade as well. Yeah, I mean, plus 10 willpower versus the plus 5 fellowship versus infinitely stacking willpower. Not even a contest. Yeah, I'm still debating on Abelard, though. Whether I want these boots. I mean, he doesn't take damage anyway. So I'm thinking the Bruiser boots are better. I'll keep these just in case. Alright then, real quick, we need to equip our new ship items so I don't forget. Because I will forget. Alright, I'll say that's an upgrade. Uh, this is a definite upgrade. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Alright, good stuff. We're good, we got a fair bit done. A few colony projects, got a lot of new equipment. Now we just need more reputation with everybody, we can get the good stuff, but that's a ways off, I think. That does seem like a lot of these new colony projects give you a lot of reputation. So that's good. Alright, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we'll continue towards Dargonus, so we can deal with Abelard's quest and I'm still not sure what's going with Achilles. People are acting like he disappeared, or he died, but we found him, we spoke to him. We spoke to him after people thought he was dead, he was standing in our palace. Then of course we learned that he betrayed us, or he was compromised by the Jukari. So I'm hoping he's still standing in our palace, and we can talk to him. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope to see you guys in the next one.